Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the iPhone 15 Pro has been out for over six months at this point. And so I thought we'd talk about how it's held up as far as durability, scratches, and whether or not maybe you should pick one up or wait for the iPhone 16 Pro later this year. Now the overall design is something that's a little bit more refined than what we've had before. It takes what we've had with previous generations with the curved off edges of the iPhone 11 series and then carries them through to the 12 and 13 and 14 models. So we now have a curved edge around the outside instead of just having a sharp edge like the previous generations. So it feels more like somewhere in between both of these designs taking the nice curved edge but also the flat edge that makes it easier to hold on to. So with that of course it just feels much nicer to hold than previous generations and every time i pick one up i'm immediately reminded of how thin and light it is compared to the 15 pro max so just holding on to this it's much easier to hold use one-handed reach across the entire thing as you can see i can do with the 15 pro max but it's just easier to use one-handed with the 15 pro for me as far as the frame, of course, this is titanium this year, and you'll see a lot of different fingerprints if you don't have the natural one like this. On the 15 Pro Max before, this is touching it from one day. It picks up this many fingerprints. You have to wipe it off and clean it every single day. With the 15 Pro, with the natural titanium, it just doesn't really show that. It may show a few little fingerprints, but nothing like you have with the other color options. As far as durability, well, being titanium, it is fairly durable and doesn't show as many chips or scratches like we have on other finishes as well. I actually have that on my blue one here where we have a little chip in the left hand corner on the back. We don't have that on the natural version. So it seems to hold up a little bit better as far as maybe tapping it into something, maybe dropping it. However, this one has never been dropped. Of course, it's held up well as far as scratches. The sapphire displays over the cameras don't have a single scratch on them. The overall bottom doesn't seem to scratch like the previous stainless steel versions on the previous models. Sometimes you get a bunch of scratches or scrapes on the stainless steel there, and you don't get that on the titanium, so it seems to hold up pretty well there. As far as the display or the glass, well, it holds up pretty well, but not as well as previous generations. If we take a look at maybe the other one I have here in purple, well, I don't see a scratch that's very obvious. There may be one there, but on the 15 Pro, there's a scratch here and I have no idea where it came from. There's also one toward the top. So it seems to be, even though it's ceramic shield, it definitely seems to be a little bit less durable than the previous generation of ceramic shield, at least in my testing. The same is true on my 15 Pro Max. I've shown that before where it has tons of scratches and I'm not even sure where they came from. So if I show that, I have a ton of scratches here. And again, I have no idea where all those scratches came from. Just the one on the front of the 15 Pro, since it hasn't been my main phone is less severe, but it's definitely something I would put a screen protector on. As far as the overall updates and performance, well, it's gotten better since the initial launch. With the initial launch, we had heat issues where the phone would overheat in certain situations in different BMWs, different automobiles or cars. And in general, it just wasn't great. And that was because of the software. iOS 17 has improved greatly since then. While it still has bugs, now with iOS 17.4.1 or later, depending on when you're watching this, it's definitely gotten better. And Apple should support this for many years to come. iOS 18 should be a major update, but we should also get maybe iOS 23 or further on after that with security updates and more. So it can run games such as Resident Evil 4 and other ones that are pretty major. And we should see some ones in the future, just things you wouldn't expect a smartphone to be able to run. You can connect it to a TV or a monitor, use it with a PlayStation or Xbox controller or something else, and just play those on your device. You can also install apps like the one from today's sponsor, Lifen, who sponsored this video. This is a smart connected toothbrush and it's been pretty great. I've been using it for a couple months at this point. Now it's a little bit different than others in that it actually oscillates and vibrates at the same time. So the oscillations are actually based on dentist recommended base brushing techniques, and it uses a proprietary servo system. It actually controls the brush head up to 60 degrees back and forth. There's some force here since it's enabled and because it uses a servo system, it's more consistent and very powerful. So if I just press this once, it will enable it and you'll see it starts moving side to side. If I try and stop it, it takes a lot of force to try and stop that. So when you're actually using this to brush, 
you sort of just move it back and forth as it does the brushing up and down for you. Very simply snaps back into place. And then after about one to two minutes, whatever you have it set to, it then stops. So it's just very simple to use. Press it once, then you're good to go. You'll start brushing and it's a very pleasant sound. It's not really anything annoying, but it does take a little bit of time to get used to. So you can see what it looks like. It works really well. And I'll leave a link to the Life and Smart Toothbrush if you wanna check it out in the description below. Now, as far as the processor goes, well, because it can run all of those AAA games, it's super fast. Of course, if we go into Geekbench here, you'll see that we have about eight gigs of RAM with the A16 Pro. Of course, they improve this every year. It has a neural engine that's improved every year, and it's just super fast overall. It does get a little bit warm from time to time, which is completely normal. However, it hasn't given me any overheat messages. It hasn't dimmed the display when it's really hot outside or anything like that so far this year. However, if you're in a very hot environment, it will pull down the display a little bit if it's super hot and needs to cool down the processor. Hopefully Apple improves the overall heat dissipation next year, but they say it's improved with the 15 Pro despite the problems we had early on. Performance is just something you don't really think about too much because it's super fast. Go into something such as weather, it opens right up. Go ahead and just scroll really fast. It's nice and smooth with ProMotion, and that's thanks to eight gigs of RAM, the A16 Pro, or if you wanted to go into a game, it's nice and fluid and fast as well. Call of Duty, Warzone, Genshin Impact, Minecraft, maybe PUBG Mobile. If we go into Minecraft, it reloads, takes a second because it was in memory, and then we're in. Frame rates are nice and fluid and fast, and it's just something that's mostly fast all the time once everything is drawn and you're ready to go. So typically let it load for a moment and you're good to go and there, get out of the game. So in general, the A16 Pro is super fast and we could see it again reused this year with the A16 phones as well. Now, as far as the battery life goes, while we do have cycle counts built into the iPhone 15 models, I'm not sure why they didn't carry that over to previous models, but if we take a look at it, you'll see this one has only been cycled 15 times. So I reached out to a viewer that had a ton of cycles to check out his battery health and battery life in general. And you can see they dropped down to 99% maximum capacity after 228 cycles. This is quite good, even compared to my 15 Pro Max, where it still has only in the 150 range and has dropped down to 99%. As far as overall battery life, well, you'll see six hours and 49 minutes, you'll see where they charged. And throughout the next day, six hours, 49 minutes with their apps they use. Again, if we keep scrolling, the following day they had five hours and 16 minutes of screen active time, 10 hours and nine minutes of screen idle time. So typically between five and a half to seven hours, depending on what you're doing, some people actually get even more if they're just watching video or streaming video, depending on what you're doing, whether it's playing games, texting someone on messages or WhatsApp, using LinkedIn, the phone or more is going to affect that greatly. But expect between five and a half to seven hours, depending on how your usage is, as it can vary. When it comes to the display, well, the display looks great. We've had this for quite some time. It's super bright, 2000 nits outdoors, 1000 nits in normal use, and 1600 nits peak HDR. It has great viewing angles, but it does use PWM. So it uses PWM to modulate the brightness, making it brighter or dim, depending on how it's flickering the display. Now, above a certain percent, about 39%, you can't really see this, and compared to other phones, you can see it's flickering fast, you can't really see it with the 15 Pro. It doesn't bother my eyes at all on the 15 Pro Max. It's the same display and it's highly recommended unless you're super sensitive to it, which those that are sensitive to PWM, it can cause extreme eye strain, nausea, or just make you feel sort of tired or unpleasant to look at the display. So it seems to be fixed for most people, but for certain use cases, it's going to be a problem. It does have an always on display, which I really like, but I turn off the background as far as the wallpaper and it will sort of change depending on how often you're looking at it. If you have your Apple watch connected and you walk away, it could turn off the display, but it's really nice to have that option and it can bring it down to one Hertz or lower ratings this year to save some power. Also, we have standby mode that stays on 24 seven in this phone. So we have wireless charging, of course. And if you leave it here and lock your phone or you go to bed, it will go into a standby mode. So this is always great to have this option. Just swipe through different clocks, leave it on all the time with the 15 pro. 
Now the dynamic Island is really great, but I wish Apple would actually use it a little bit more with different apps in iOS 17.4 betas earlier on. We saw some use using the stopwatch where you hit start and then swipe home. It would go to the dynamic Island. They've since removed that it does work for alarms and other things, but just not the stopwatch. I'd love to see more functionality there with apps like Uber using it, different flight apps and much more. It's really great. Of course it's great with music. So if we go into our music, press play, swipe home, it goes up there again. If we go back and start a timer, start the timer there, it will go in and split it and give you both options swipe between it, of course, and you have different options or you can clear it all together. So it's really great to have that. I'm glad they have it, but I wish they would utilize it a little bit more as it's just something that feels like they could do a lot more with it unless they plan to get rid of it eventually. Now the dynamic Island of course hides the camera a little bit and the cameras are pretty good. The forward facing camera hasn't changed much and now we're recording from it. So you can hear the microphone compared to the studio microphone, but also it has autofocus like it did the previous couple of years. And it also uses the processor, the a 16 pro to sort of process the video a little bit better. So that gives you an idea of what it looks like. It's great to use for YouTube. Of course, it really hasn't changed too much over the past couple of years, but it seems to process sort of skin tones and things a little bit better. Now it works great for that. Great for regular video as well. Of course we have USB C so we can transfer files that are huge with ProRes, and also use it maybe to just screen capture and put it on a monitor. I've shown that in previous videos. So it's great for that. Great for photos. Now, some people still don't really care for the way it processes different photos with HDR and other things. So if I snap a photo here, you can see what it looks like. It looks basically true to life through the camera. You're looking through here again, we'll bring in both just these different colors and it gives you an idea of what it looks like. I think it does a pretty good job. Of course, if you have a professional camera, it's going to look a little bit better, but Apple keeps improving this every year and it seems like it's doing a great job. The video is the thing that impresses me the most though, as you could use this completely full time for YouTube. So maybe I'll start doing that eventually. Now also it has a minimal focus distance. That's not as good as previous models. I've shown that before, where if we get up close, you can only get about, well, this close or so before it loses focus, but I can zoom with the two time zoom, zoom back out and it's fine. So that's one way to get closer, or you could use macro altogether, but that doesn't look as clear when you take a photo. So it's not as good as previous versions, but that's because of the lens situation with the 48 megapixel camera. So it's not too much of an issue, pretty typical for maybe if you went from micro four thirds to full frame cameras, you experience the same sort of thing. When it comes to the speakers, of course, we have similar speakers we've had for years, but we have one at the top, one at the bottom, and they sound pretty good. They're nice and loud, but let's take a listen and see how they've held up. The speakers are nice and loud, but at the very highest volumes, they do get a little bit distorted, which is completely normal when you have it fully turned up, but at about 84 to 85 decibels, according to this meter here, it works pretty well and it will work great for most people. If you want anything louder, you could get a home pod or something else like that. When it comes to anything else, well, it has crash detection and emergency SOS. I've talked about this in the past and I really appreciate these features as I experienced them about a year or so ago in an accident. It triggered on my Apple watch instead of my iPhone because I was wearing it, but it would have worked either way and asked me if I wanted to call emergency services. Thankfully, no one was harmed, so I canceled it, but it was just great to have that sort of peace of mind that it's there. If we go into emergency SOS, of course, you can call it on your own. And also if you don't have a signal, you can use this with satellite. So if we scroll down, we can do a demo of the satellite connection. This is great to have if you want to hike somewhere or you're just in an area with low reception in general, I'm really happy that it's there. And it's just something that's really nice to have that we've had for a couple of years when it comes to overall connectivity. Well, 5g seems to work pretty well. Many of the issues we've had are software related or a couple weeks ago, we had issues with carriers that cause problems in general. So it seems to improved over time. We've had carrier updates and much more and Wi-Fi is the same thing. Some people had issues with Wi-Fi earlier on, but it seems mostly resolved and sometimes due to the routers that you have, I have an Eero router that actually had an update specifically for Apple devices, and it's been much better ever since. So there's definitely some improvements that could be made here and there. 
but overall it seems mostly to be fixed. The same is true also with Bluetooth. I think Apple continues to improve this with the iPhone and AirPods and different updates. So they seem to work well. They're not disconnecting on me and hopefully we continue to get better updates for that. But with CarPlay, the same thing is true. I haven't had any disconnects with wireless CarPlay, despite some people having that, but it seems to be specific vehicles such as Honda or BMW. I have an Audi, it works fine, and many people haven't said it's a problem with the specific cars I mentioned it is, but everything else seems to be pretty good so far. Now, as far as if you should still pick up an iPhone 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max, at this point, unless you can get it heavily discounted, I would wait because the iPhone 16 Pro is typically released around September every year as Apple releases every new iPhone. So you'll get that along with new features that will be specific to that device with iOS 18 like they do there as well. We got the action button, of course, this past year, and I use it for the flashlight and that's about it. But other than that, you can customize it and maybe we'll have more functionality with iOS 18, but I wouldn't run out and buy one just for maybe that button or something else. iPhone 16 isn't too far away, so I would probably hold off unless, again, you get this at a very steep discount. Otherwise, again, it's not time to buy one right now. I usually say after the six month point, just wait. But either way, it's a great phone. I could definitely recommend it if you really can find a great deal on it or you just need a new phone in general. It's not a bad buy overall. It's been a great great phone for me. And I like that it's thinner and lighter. I really want to switch to this honestly size wise, but the smaller screen and battery life is the only thing holding me back. I like the display quite a bit. Again, it's easier to use one handed and maybe eventually I will maybe for next year, go to the smaller size. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do, along with today's sponsor, Life, and be sure to check them out as well. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.